Welcome to Nevada News Makers on the broadcast today, part two of our broadcast about the legislature with Susan Fisher, Mary Lau, and Alex Goff. It's all coming up next on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. 40 years ago, Hotel California and the theme from Rocky were number one on the pop charts, and D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal started on the road to becoming Nevada's leading roofing company. I couldn't be more proud of what we've achieved. And over these 40 years, we become an employee-owned company. So when you're talking to any employee, you're talking to an owner. And here's to the next 40 years. Happy 40th birthday, D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. ProGroup Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. ProGroup Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. ProGroup Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we have a second show with this great power pundit panel. Uh, Mary Lau, President and CEO of the Retail Association of Nevada. Alex Goff is a Democratic Party National Committeeman. And Susan Fisher heads up government affairs for McDonald Carano Wilson. Um, and so uh, we covered a lot of ground in our first show, but I have lots of other things to cover in, in a second show. Um, let's talk about education, K through 12 and how that moved through, and now it's being pushed down to the counties uh, to raise sales taxes if they choose to. And already, uh, Marsha Burke Bigler was on the program saying, I don't think so, and we're getting a lot of pushback from Clark County Commissioners as well. That one was too much of an obvious punt. That one was not solving a situation that was trying to do with the two-thirds stuff. We cannot continue this, and, and we have too high a sales tax rate here. But the obvious punt is the fact that during the interim, we're gonna, you know, people are going to be working on the next tax packages. You're going to be looking at ad valorem, which gaming wanted and stuff. We still don't have a services tax here. We did not really handle education funding this time. We gave it a patchwork quilt again. So there really has to be, coupled with the Nevada plan stuff, more studies, more dedications, and what's happening is more process is made during the interim than the, during the session and if you get the sign off and hold the groups together that's a good thing but it could go for homeless it can go for schools it was there was too many places it could go for but it will end up pitting county against county because you've ended up with raising sales taxes in areas that are too high already. And, and Alex, you know, I mean, as I said, there's already a great pushback uh, on the sales tax situation. We also have rural school boards who are saying, you know, we're going to get screwed in this thing. Well, in the last episode, we talked about the, uh, the ambitious nature of this session and how many things they wanted to get done. So I could have only imagined if they would have coupled uh, increasing taxes uh, onto this uh, first session where you have Democrats in control. And, and, and my goodness, if they would have increased taxes, the, the screams that would have been let out across the state. And so I think next session, I think the governor's already signaling that they want to look at the revenue side and what can we do to restructure our tax base, which I think is going to be a very heated and 
healthy conversation here in Nevada. Our sales taxes are too high and, and they are regressive in nature, affecting uh, the least of these mostly. And so um, I'm excited to uh, have that conversation. And like I brought up in the last episode as well, property tax. Uh, we need to look at our property tax structure in Nevada, uh, among other taxes, services taxes, mm -hmm. to, to make sure that uh, we can properly fund uh, not only education, but other basic things we uh, require from the government. Um, you know, in addressing the, the topics that already been brought up here, um, there's also the question of re-election for both the governor and legislators. Mm -hmm. So all this talk of taxes, um, you know, is, is that a really good thing going into uh, the next session? Well, the governor is safe for the next session, but then it's the one after that. So if, if we have a, a big tax increase next session, then that's going to hurt him going forward. And who knows what, I mean, next election cycle is going to be a pretty interesting one here anyway. Um, the, I think it, it will make a difference after the next session, maybe not so much this next one, unless they're pro making promises to increase taxes. You know, we, Alex referenced looking at the property tax. We've been looking at the property tax issue <laughs> for decades. And the famed um, Carol Villardo has said, we need to fix this. And we do. And they still keep every session, they kick that can down the road. Fix the property tax issue. Fix the secondary cap. Fix it on resale. Just, it's got to be fixed. We've had some proposals on how to fix it. And it doesn't ever get done. But you're both right. You're all three right. Our sales taxes we're at the max that most people can stand. That's why people in Washoe County go to Yarrington to buy their cars because the sales tax there is cheaper enough that it makes sense to drive an hour and a half or an hour. So, uh, You know, and in Clark County, you've paid extra for cops. In uh, northern Nevada and in Clark County, you've got RTC. Um, you know, the difference in what you pay for gas in Carson Valley versus what you pay in Reno mm -hmm. is uh, 30 mm -hmm. plus cents. So I is there any stomach for, you know, uh, increasing taxes? Well, not at this point in time because the cases really haven't been made because they really don't fix things. We haven't been able to get enough of a, of a, of a scattered plan. I mean, Alex is absolutely right. The sales tax has so many regressive qualities and a uh, and families actually pay less in, in um, services than they would sales. So it can balance out if you go and give a cut to the sales tax at the same time kind of thing. Susan's right on the ad valorem. But you've got a real problem there because there are so many real estate investment trusts that who actually is going to pay those taxes and things. It's a complex issue. and. It, it's going to require all hands on deck and then and and really being there problematic is all get out to do it next legislative session because you can wipe out I mean every time the taxes are passed a Republican governor has passed the taxes and they mm -hmm. wipe out the the Republican mm -hmm. elected officials that held for it yep. I think the only one remaining now was John Hambrick who wasn't there most of the time right and so mm -hmm. It, it just, there's a bloody price to pay in having that debate, and you have to have the courage to do it. All right, so the bottom line, though, is if teachers don't get the raise, we're already hearing threats of an illegal strike in Clark County, which we've seen across the country. Um, so where do we go if teachers don't get their raise? Well, I believe everything that I've seen, it looks like uh, the funds were allocated to where now the school board should be able to implement the raise. And so um, hopefully we don't have teachers striking. Um, it's important that, um, you know, there's labor peace. And so... Um, but what happens if, if Senator Settlemeyer files his lawsuit against uh, the fact that extending those taxes... Um, is not constitutional. I, I, I take him seriously that he will. And so, um, you know, I think that um, when, you know, if, if they go down that direction, I think we'll see what, um, you know, we'll have some kind of ruling on what was done and then hopefully they're able to put everything back together and, uh, you know, if there's special sessions necessary. But, um, yeah, well, I think we have to wait and see. Uh, Susan, I hate to use the phrase special session, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just made her nauseous. <laughs> yeah, I would hate to go into special session for that. I do believe that it was incorrect um, to extend the MBT tax without having the two-thirds vote on that. I think that, that was, that's a bad move. It just sets a really bad precedent also. And um, 
I'm hopeful that the courts will agree. Even though we need revenue, do it straight up. Do it straight up. And maybe they wouldn't have gotten the two thirds. I don't know, maybe they would have. Well, teachers raises isn't the answer to the education fix anyway. It's not, it's not. You know, I agree. You, it, we it, need to pay them more. You need, oh no, yeah. you definitely do. But, but it's until not the you fix. fix education, the allocation of funds and everything else, I mean, you can do a whole week of shows with Brian Wachter if you want to talk about education. Oh yes, I know that. <laughs> and, and let's He's my quit, ace in the hole. Yeah. Let's, let's quit punishing charter schools that provide an additional option for, for parents and for students to be able to choose to take their kids who may not fit in a, in a traditional school, but they're still subject to the same um, pay structure that the, the regular public schools have because they are public schools. A lot of, I actually had some legislators say, what do you mean public charter? They're public schools? Yes, they're public schools. Mm -hmm. And they get an allocation per student, but they don't get anything for the brick and mortar. And so they're having to provide all their own infrastructure without any additional funding, and they only have the per student funding and to hire the teachers and everything. So they've got to work a little bit more efficiently, and they do. And the charter schools are doing well. They've had a few hiccups along the way, but our public schools have hiccups. I, I always, I've always believed that poverty is one of the major drivers of education and I think that looking and addressing issues of families not making enough money to survive is a big issue. There are obviously students who are able to do really well in Nevada's educational system and um, maybe you know those aren't captured uh, well because we look at the overall picture. So I think a student has an opportunity to achieve here in Nevada but sadly I think those who are uh, living in poverty and, and malnourished I think that uh, you know, it's it's tough out them. It's tough out there for not only in education, but later in jobs. And so I, I, I'm a big proponent of fixing uh, all of the issues structurally, not just saying that education mm -hmm. is poor. Mm -hmm. I think it's much deeper, much more complicated. All right. So mm -hmm. let's uh, let's move on to our next topic, which is minimum wage. So how is that going to affect um, your members in terms of retail? Well, actually, probably not a lot. The very, very small companies, yes, small companies will be affected in that way. But um, it was already baked in the cake. Yeah, it pretty much was because it's it, it's it's there. And as this steps up, because it was a gradual step up, it wasn't a big attack, you know, kind of thing where they couldn't. And the certain areas, I mean, it, it still has to get back, uh, coupling with what Alex said, it still has to get back to certain entry level jobs are just that. That's to buy your school books, your bicycle, whatever. It was never meant to be a job. So if you, a permanent one, you know, so if you get back to the education principles, a minimum wage, kind of like you've, you've earned that wage anyway, but when you get back and you lift people out of poverty, those aren't the people that are looking for those jobs, you know. So it, it all has to come together. It's a societal issue. So we didn't oppose that. You know, we didn't work against the minimum wage, but uh, we appreciate the way it, it evolved into more of a structured to get Nevada businesses able to prepare for it. Unfortunately, what usually happens is the youth and the senior wage, you know, those positions kind of drift off as, as, as very small employers try to compensate for the difference because nowadays uh, small businesses you work for your own wages you don't really get a lot out of it you know um, and and I think that because of the economy in Nevada at this point and things are booming that that mm -hmm. if you you weren't even paying minimum wage to begin with because exactly. you couldn't get anybody exactly but there are very few unless somebody's dependent on tips right their but, wages, but this then the next recession that, yeah. that, that that's when we'll feel yes this. the and I don't oppose raising the minimum wage either. And I appreciate that Speaker Frierson did the graduated raising, gave mm -hmm. businesses some time to adjust to it. Um, you'll see more automation. Fortunately or unfortunately, you'll see more automation. Um, what the hard part is, is the piling on. You raise the minimum wage, you extend the MBT, you require paid leave and all of the other things that you add on yeah. to businesses, each one individually is not really a big deal. The MBT for a small business, is that a big deal? Is that gonna make or break a small business, the modified business tax? No. But you pile on all these different things and it does add up. It's the same with 
with all the data requests and that they require of various agencies and medical professionals and schools, oh, let's, I can't count how many bills there were for data requests to require more data. At some point, you gotta let doctors treat people, you've gotta let businesses just do their business, and you've gotta let teachers teach and not require 47 different data requests to go sit in some pot somewhere and nobody will ever even look at it. Um, Alex, you get the last word on I this. I mean, what we know is that inflationary pressures on wages are, are slower than others. So you mentioned gas earlier in Carson Valley is more expensive. We know that- Well, that's expensive. Are, or, or excuse me, last- but I feel but here, Carson. But, ga but gas is going up in prices generally. We know that rents are going up. We know that health care is going up every year. And so when we look at all these inflationary pressures, it has to be distributed between industry and, and the individual, the worker. And so how do we compensate for that? We do it through things, uh, it, setting that baseline minimum wage. And I think these uh, conversations are important. And I, I sat next to two people who said that they support some of these things, and that's very positive to hear. And so, um, yeah, I, I think that during the next recession, we're going to have a, a different baseline of what the minimum wage is, which I think overall is going to be a positive thing. All right, let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Because of UMC, there's a wide open road ahead of me. Because of UMC, she can grow up with her twin sister. Because of UMC, I'm here to help you. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers with our great power pundit panel with Alex Goff, Susan Fisher, and Mary Lau. Um, university system, Alex, um, didn't get anything until the very end and once the very end was over, the money for the raises that they were supposed to get, which was 3%, wasn't even there. Your thoughts on what happened to the university system? Um, yeah, no, I read that same report about uh, the fact that the, the, the raises weren't going to be there. And, um, you know, it's un unfortunate. And it's, a, it's, a <laughs> it's subject to how we fund things here in Nevada, where we have to project out. And uh, so it's, it's unfortunate that that wasn't caught. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was m caught and missed and then caught. Mm -hmm. Well, quite honestly, but that one was not on my radar screen. I had too uh, okay. many other bills I was watching. Okay, yeah. but, but I mean, it was interesting where, you know, in the past, you know, in the Jim Rogers days as chancellor, I mean, you had an army right. of, of people at uh, the legislature lobbying on behalf of the university system. And, you know, this time around, you know, well, there, you know. there was a huge conversation about a pot of money that was still there, and even James Settlemeyer kept bringing that up. But if you sat in Ways and Means at the end, and they did the pork bill, there was a lot of money that went to places, and I just think it was missed because they they handed it out then, but but you know it, it just they didn't get their buildings and you know this kind of stuff. So I, it just. 
the the reality of shiny die and that evening in that pork bill was just like whoa what happened on the university well do you think maybe that was a conscious decision look we're mad at them for some reason so let's go ahead and fund all these projects very well could have been yep. you know you just don't know but you had you had legislators out there that that had requests had projects had other mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and and balancing that so you know I mean it's again maybe that not their session maybe next session they'll be included mm -hmm. all right let's take one more break and then we'll be right back Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor are you a homeowner who's interested in remodeling or building a home at Design Outdoor we can show you how adding natural or manufactured masonry stone can add beauty and value to your home and we refer only the best contractors our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bar again because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue with our great Power Pundit panel uh, with Mary Lau, Susan Fisher, and Alex Goff. Um, a couple of more topics. So one that you certainly can address, Susan, is um, the not getting the passage of death with dignity. I believe it was Rhode mm -hmm. Island that passed it just the other day. Yep. Um, it's yeah. outrageous that we can't get this done here in the state of Nevada. It is. It is. Um, there is some talk that there may be an effort to uh, put it on the ballot. And if it goes on the ballot, it will pass overwhelmingly. Um, I, our polling shows that 60, no, 76% of Nevadans support this. So I think that if we put it on the ballot, it will go fine. The problem is it's very expensive to get something on the ballot. We would have to gather about over 90,000 signatures, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but you either have, a, a have to have a lot of volunteers or you've got to pay people to do this. And you've got to do a public relations campaign and that's very expensive in a state, especially a state like this where it's so scattered um, in the media. So, um, but Senator Parks, who is termed out, could possibly come back next session as an assemblyman because he left the assembly before his term was up. He has, I think, one, two more, one more, session um, and if he does come back he will run the bill again and if not he may find someone else too. Uh, Mary uh, you know obviously there are still a lot of religious influences in the in the silver state um, that didn't want to see this bill get passed. Um, your thoughts on you know the ability to make your own decisions about your own demise? <sighs> Well, I actually thought I had people that was going to testify in favor of the bill and then at the last minute decided not to. And it's very, very difficult because I don't know anybody that hasn't either had friends or relatives or whatever where we're only allowed hospice care. That's as far as Nevada can go. And that's extremely difficult on you. You don't control your death, you don't have the dignity of death in, in what, what Senator Parks was trying to accomplish. Uh, you 
you end up just sort of vegetating until your body finally uses up its reserves and passes away. So it's a complex issue. People believe religious-wise, they believe karma-wise, they socially and everything else. It's like so many social issues. But everybody talks about choice. I mean, you want your choice on women's reproductive health or whatever you want to call it. Why do we deny our senior citizens or our ill people choice? You get the last word on this. Yeah, side. I can only imagine. Uh, you know, um, we had Emily Reese, who lives in Reno, who uh, passed away after a long bout dealing with colon cancer. And, um, you know, thinking like seeing some of the stages that someone goes through when they're passing away. And she was young. And so uh, thinking that people don't have that option, I think it's, it would be good for the state to, uh, to, to finally pass that. I was, I was happy to see it come up, and um, I think it would be good for the state to, to, to pass that. And uh, thanks to Senator Parks for at least doing his mm -hmm. level best and all the help that you gave him, Susan. He tried his best. He mm -hmm. really did. Yeah. And that's where we have to leave it. Thank you all very much. We took up an incredible amount of your time today, but it was really worthwhile, and we really got some insights into what happened at our legislature, and we appreciate it. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they will. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance, custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in Northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Don't forget another way of watching Nevada Newsmakers is to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast.